What is going on Wolfpack Savage here? In today's video, we're gonna be going in depth, going over the different strategies that each enemy is doing wrong. That way you guys can put yourself in their shoes and stop making these same mistakes. But if you do enjoy the video or learn something new, make sure you leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel today. But without any further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the video. FYI, for those of you who noticed that I sound weird or my energy's weird or something, um, I am recovering from the sickness, unfortunately. It's been nine days. It feels like someone shoved a bat down my throat. Now, I don't say this for sympathy. I say this just for the pure fact of if the video seems choppy or all over the place, it's probably because I'm coughing up my lungs. All right, so right here, it's just all about strategy. You just sit here and you pretend that you're AFK and then he kills you. All the strats. All right, here we are spectating back to lobby. The whole squad is gonna be landing in and there are multiple squads here. Little all over a place, but able to able to calm himself down mid fight. He's got three, can he get four? Oh, here we have Fortnite jumping Benny going around the corner, trying his best, but he misses every bullet and back to lobby squad wiping. Honestly, it's a, it's a good weapon to come back from the gulag with and he's able to get a squad wipe from it. All right, now we're up to five kills, let's go. Now talk about momentum shifts, man. That's a, that's a nice comeback. We also do have a scavenger up here in the top left hand corner of the mini map. And with that being said, not only do we have some kills and have a decent weapon, but now we can get a buttload of money. Remember guys, you wanna try to stop looting as soon as possible. When you guys in your head know that, okay, I have enough weapons to get out here and get this ground loot fight thing going when i have enough money for a few uavs that's when you should move i wouldn't sit here and just loot 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 just to buy self reses just to buy everyone uavs because if you're waiting for four people to get uavs and four people to get self res you're gonna be looting for a long time which is taking away from all the practice you guys should be getting inside of the game Right, here we are throwing a grenade at a helicopter it's a little yeah you know your limits oh we're gonna waste two okay if at first you don't succeed try try again that's such a stupid saying and we're wasting our flash all right so the problem with wasting the flash is we know there's an enemy up here that's unrelated to the helicopter at least right now might be the same team but he's by himself as of right now um there's a little staircase right here we'll see when we go up he's probably gonna need that flash in order to contest boom right here now he's a little hesitant to push by himself and i definitely agree um if you're not if you're not confident in pushing areas like this wait for your squad you know a lot of us will go in here and we'll get the kills fine but if you feel uncomfortable don't put yourself in a dangerous position especially when your squad's right next to you don't have any idea why the enemy okay i have no idea why the enemy open the door the way he did he just kind of stood right in front of it opened the door and stared if you're going to open the door just bust through it because that slow movement got his armor plates broken if he would have moved a little bit faster and back to lobby was a little bit more inaccurate he probably be in a better position but moving on there are two enemies in there because as the enemies run into the left hand side someone else is shooting so now red alert we know there are multiple bogeys purple's going from the bottom blue's going by himself all right that makes no damn sense one crack, two crack. Don't go for the execute from the doorway. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. You saw him peek in that staircase, brother. Now, AMD goes up top and hides. Not sure why. He's got no angle to protect us. He has an angle to kill him, but only after he executes us, which he probably will do. Duh. And lo and behold, there it is. Now, as an enemy to his right-hand side, he is completely oblivious. They're playing a whole nother game. All right, before we move on to this next squad that happened to be in the same area, let's talk about that fight. Now, I did like the fact that he held off because he wasn't confident. He didn't know the whole story. I assumed there was one enemy up there because that was the only person shooting. Lo and behold, there was a whole damn squad. Um, so good on him for holding off. But again, that sun grenade would have been a lot more beneficial um, using it in that situation. Going for the execute. This is, dude, this is, if I had to guess a number, and I'm just guessing, 
I'd say this is 60% of players problem. So this right here in general is just a bad angle. We know there are more enemies in there because we're getting shot when this guy's not even looking at us. So what do you do? Just change your angle. Step to the left a little bit. That way the staircase doesn't have a heady on you at all. But not only that, the moment he goes down, there's that heady I'm talking about, that staircase. Even though we see this guy, he's still focused on the execute. Meanwhile, we're getting pelted by two more players, right? So again, if we back up just a little bit, and this angle here, if we just step to the left a little bit and change our angle completely, we have this wall that's gonna be protecting us, providing a little bit of cover and a lot of concealment from these enemies, utilizing this as a heady. I mean, there's no amount of Fortnite jumping you're gonna do to fix the bad plays that you make. All right, moving on to the next fight. We really didn't see much of this, so I won't analyze it. Oh, oh, again, again, again. All right, I want you guys to know what the enemy's doing right now. First off, remember what I just talked about when we respect hitting the guy on the outside. He changed his angle to give him a better shot on us and he also played this wall beautifully. He basically just hit behind it, kind of stepped and shot, moved a little bit. That way, if he got damaged, he can step right back behind it. What did we do wrong? The exact same thing last guy did, right? Instead of changing his angle and stepping to the right and utilizing this wall as a little bit of cover, we sat right in front of the doorway and just relied solely on our aim and accuracy to get the kill. And guys, this is most players' problems. Most of you guys watching right now, you do this too. Stop ego challenging the enemy. Utilize the buildings, the walls, the vehicles, everything that can protect you from getting shot in the face. Utilize it mid combat. This is why movement's crucial. People don't just move side to side in every single fight to avoid getting shot. It does work sometimes, but that's not the sole purpose. People usually utilize movement to break away to cover or navigate around cover. Notice whenever you're watching a stream or someone's gameplay, how they work corners and angles and cover and concealment. They're not just standing out in the open like this. This is how to die 101. Look at our teammate. Look at him. Completely oblivious, dude. Completely oblivious. Now, there were three interests he could have come from, so but I can't hate on the fact that he didn't try to win the fight first, right? He didn't try to bait the res, forcing the enemy out. He didn't try to get his teammate to go to a safer area to get res. He didn't even check outside or the window or down the staircase. He didn't clear anything. He just said, okay, no one's pushing. I'm gonna go for the res. Now, a lot of times you guys are going for the res. What happens? Enemy comes around the corner and he kills you. And you're always like, how the hell did he know? He can hear when you're injecting your teammate with the juice. He can hear it. That's, that's what they're waiting for. The moment they hear that, they go in. That's why you bait it. Stick it and then hold the angle, right? All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and skip out on the boring crap. Basically, we brought back, back to lobby because he's a team carry. I'm um, not really too confident with it, but we'll see. And we've spotted enemies rotating to the loadout. Now, green is off fighting a whole nother fight. And here we are continuously ADSing. Now, look, you got to close the gap and you got to close it fast. Every time we stop to ADS, it slows down our movement. Every time we stop to ADS, it slows down our movement, which makes it harder for us to catch the enemy. Look, look at the focus. Not looking around, not trying to find where his teammates are. We're on the edge of the circle in airport and we don't care about nothing. He might die, he might not, I don't know, but this is still a bad tactic no matter how, what the outcome becomes. No, I don't want you guys to just abandon executing. You got to execute these thoughts because they're out here self resin right? No one likes self resin bitch. But there's a time and a place for it, guys. All right, Green goes off and dies by himself. I mean, that's... Oh, my gosh. And that, that's basically a given, guys. Look, if you're already struggling in the game, you need to get to know your limits. Just like, just like Homeboy was throwing grenades. Uh, brother, behind you. <laughs> let's, let's just go back to that. This, this comes down to reaction time. This comes down to observation, perception, cognition, reaction time, whatever you want to call it, all of the above. Um, now, right here, we get shot, right? Or we get shot at. Tracer comes behind us, poof, hits the wall, poof, right? Oh, shit, instantly red alert in my head. There's an enemy behind me. 
All right, so we're playing a dangerous game too, being on the edge of the circle. So we know there's a team to the north because that's that's the ones that killed our teammate. And we know there's a team behind us because, well, he just shot us. That's a given. So what do you do? Where do you go? Well, I really wouldn't have moved just now because if the circle dives back the other way, you're gonna have to double back across an open airfield, right? Not to mention there's one guy on the hill that way. There's a lot of ways you can push him and be safe because of the different tiers of the hill. Um, I would try to analyze the situation a little bit more before I made my move, to be honest. Um, one, wait for the circle to collapse. Let me know where I need to go. Two, again, count the enemies. How many are over there? And we're still, and now we're getting up from holding a squad. Now, no amount of analyzation would have fixed that situation for him at all. He still would have died to that guy, except the fact that if he would analyze where the circle was going, oh shit, back the way you came from. He wouldn't have died. Every little decision you guys make in this game will be crucial to how the outcome is, right? There is a lot of RNG, random generated bullshit, right? It just depends on the luck of the enemies, how good they are, how bad they are, the position they're in. There's a lot of variables you cannot control. So a lot of the times you'll lose no matter what you do, even if you're perfect, even if your match is flawless, you can get fifth partied, right? You can just get pushed by 20 enemies at the same time. They'll just dance in your body. But the shit like this, is definitely in our control. If he, if he just would have waited three seconds, man, he would have been like, you know what? Maybe pushing across there is stupid, and he'd live to fight another day. But here we are. Here we are. Oh, look, the enemy's crossing the airfield, coming to where we were just at. That's fucking weird. Weird! Oh, this poor son of a bitch. Oh, my God. Here we have poor little Timmy shaking in his boots. We've got enemies around us. we got one armor break. Don't go for the execute. Oh, weird. I really want to get better at the game. Do you? Do you really? You really want to get better? Because I feel like, I feel like no. I feel like a lot of people don't. Don't go for executes in the middle of a 1v4. Don't. Don't. I repeat one more time. Do not do it. Only one guy came in from behind and shot us. If we would have just been a little bit more observant, looked around, listened for footsteps, instead of just blowing the enemy's down body away, we could have had a potential to outplay that situation. 1d4s are hard for anyone, for anybody. Don't let anyone to fool you. They're hard as shit. But when they're when they're filing in like that, oh, those are the ones you gotta take advantage of. Uh, but regardless, here we have Big Eugene and Tragedy. It was just tragic that uh, his team wasn't with him, to be honest. I don't know if it was these guys' fault or if your boy ran off by himself, but regardless, work together, play together. As far as that fight's concerned, I was too busy talking about the bad teamwork. We didn't really get to break that down in real time. But um, look at the minimap again. When you have a position to outplay situations, you need to take advantage of it. We have a room to our left-hand side we can utilize. We can jump out of this position completely and play the outside of the building. Whatever it is, is better than what we're doing here. Just standing here, allowing this enemy, this enemy, and this guy. If he does wrap around the left, they'll all, have, all three have an angle on us. Bad play. Why didn't he see that? Because he was tunnel visioned on the one guy he's shooting at instead of paying attention to the minimap mid fight. But that's a lot to look at. How are you supposed to look at the minimap mid fight? You just, you gotta do it. it. It takes a quick second, man. Not even, it's a millisecond. Just flash your eyes up there and back. I don't even have a photographic memory. And I feel like when I look at the mini, mini map, I can basically remember exactly what I saw. Maybe that is photographic, I don't know. Never helped me in school. Here we have a hat running around. There we go. God, this game is fucking flawless, man. Oh my god, dude. You know, every time, uh, every time Activision would always just brag about how much money they've made and 51 million players, we've made a trillion dollars. You know, I always hated them then, but now, like, seeing this shit and the lack of attention to detail they have in this game, it's just sickening. It's absolutely sickening. All right, here we have tragedy, crouch walking enemies to his right and he's just still looking down we get a knock going for the execute all right we get, oh, we're fortunately able to do it enemy getting out of the vehicle behind us we're in a bad spot we need to jump and change our position jump out of here there you go the enemy's at the higher ground on us and even though he still would have the higher ground at least we could hide our body and have a chance to rotate out i'm pretty sure that guy died by another squad anyway if he didn't die he definitely got shot at Big Eugene like, bro, take the car. Don't don't take the car. Someone just died over there. Don't go to the car, homie. 
And look again, making decisions is crucial. This guy, this guy's not making any decisions. He's just frozen solid. I want everyone who watches this video to play your next five games with my voice in your head. And I want this voice to be repeated a thousand times over. Make a decision. Even if you die, even if you lose, make a decision. You're better off making a wrong decision than no decision at all, right? How are you supposed to learn from a bad decision if you didn't really make a decision? Does that make sense? Look at the slide cancel. Look at that. Look at the sliding. Oh, boys. Look, the whole point of slide canceling is to cancel the slide. Slide canceling, I, I can understand why it's a little difficult. But if you practice for a week, you'll, you'll master the shit out of it. You will master the shit out of it. Everywhere you guys that's not the second thing. I want you guys to do. I'm gonna put you guys to work today I want y'all to slide cancel everywhere through the map every time when you're when your feet come up when your knees come off the ground Dude sprint and slide again sprint and slide again and just keep doing that. Don't forget to cancel that shit, too Don't do what he's doing There's so many basic fundamentals of this game that I feel like every player should master by now aim and accuracy is probably gonna be the hardest thing you guys master strategy just comes with practice and again common sense um slide canceling just comes with a little bit of practice no sense to it at all just developing muscle memory all right unfortunately our dude has died here comes an enemy slide canceling right in and we're able to just what the fuck we're, we're able to hit fire that dude to, to kingdom come look at this this is a little weird we're not even aiming at the guy. We're just like, hey, I don't think he hit him. I don't think he actually lined up his crosshair with this dude one time, except for the execute, and he's able to kill him. God, I love this game. All right, tragedy out and running away. He's getting shot from behind, trying to stem. Now, look, there comes to a point in every fire where you just got to turn around and try your best to outplay the situation. He's luckily able to break away, but if that enemy would have continued pursuit, we would have died. Oh man, this gun is weak little thing, bro. Again, another situation. We <laughs> somehow he doesn't die. Oh, oh, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Oh, there we go. Weird. Weird. If your plates are broken and the enemies are on your tail, you have to try to outplay the situation. There's nowhere for you to go. We had walls we could have tried to use. They would have shot through him, so it wouldn't have been much protection, but at least we could have tried our best to outplay the situation. He would have died regardless, most likely. But again, if you're trying to contest enemies, even in those bad positions, when you know you're going to die, at least you're practicing in those last few seconds. Ooh, little guppy, level 354, 15 kills, having the time of his life. Laying prone, licking the tiles. Awesome. Got my hopes up. What are you doing? What are you doing, guy? All right, we have a UAV up. We've got four enemies identified. No, we've got five enemies. We have the whole map identified now. The whole map. Three enemies over here, two enemies over here. What do you do? What do you do? You gatekeep these fools. You gatekeep the shit out of these guys. You don't do anything else. Blue doesn't run that way. And green doesn't stay over there. You, you gatekeep them. You split in groups of two. 2v2 and 2v3. Get your two best guys to do the 2v3. Of course, that'd be Lil Guppy rocking his 15. I would imagine he's the best on the squad. And you take out that squad. Not sure exactly what we're all doing. All by himself, res is probably important. Again, positioning would be more crucial than anything right now. We're buying a loadout drop with two enemy teams left. Here we are pushing up. Not really much cover. Pretty ballsy. But we could still probably win. I'm pretty confident he's gonna take he's gonna win this game. Now notice this right here. Our teammate just crossed in the open 
and he's pushing the enemy from behind. Why didn't he see that guy? Because he's not peeking enough to watch the entire surrounding. He's just tunnel vision on where we're at, not where our squad's at. I also want you to pay attention to this squad up in the top left-hand corner and how they're getting position on us while we're out here fighting two guys. Now again, it comes down to... Now again, it comes down to fast decision-making and making the right call. If we would have instantly moved instead of buying all that stuff, we could have split up like I had said and gate kept both these teams. This game would be over by now. Again, I'm pretty confident we're going to win, but this is the land of possibilities. Who knows? I'm not, I don't know what we're going for. We decision making on me. It's the last squad. He looked like he was about to go buy some shit. All right. Well, we win the game. GG. Now look. Going back to this team. He had 17 kills. He did good. He can improve big time. Decision making was very, very weird. Very, very off. Again, he relied more on his ability to outshoot the enemy and his movement than he did his brain. Your brain can win you a lot of fights. Your aim and accuracy cannot. So if you're lacking in the aim and accuracy department, make sure you're utilizing your mind and making decisions to help build momentum throughout the map. And also, if you do have good aim and accuracy, decision-making, of course, is gonna be important. And whenever it comes to battle royales, decision-making is crucial. This isn't like multiplayer. You can just kind of run around aimlessly. You can, but if you wanna get better, if you wanna be a goat, you gotta start thinking. You gotta start utilizing the brain. All right, here we are moving on to the second. <laughs> Why didn't it take long? Second game of the match or second game of the video, whatever. Hey, look at this guy, still heart beating. What are you doing? This team will not live long. This team will not survive. Ace goes down because the vehicle exploded. Definitely his fault regardless. Um, John, uh, we'll talk about it after the fight, boys. Jeez. Oh, man. Look at all the vehicles surrounding us like a swarm. Look at this. It's one guy in a vehicle and we're hiding from him instead of shooting him in the face. Now, a lot of you guys looking right now be like, Savage, he's level 24, be nice. No, no excuse. None. It's a shooter. Oh, yeah. Oh, here, here, here. Look at the heartbeat. Ooh, daddy. Look at it. Ooh, the AX50 build though. I, I love the AX50. This is not a build for it. I promise you that. What in the shit? Enemy should be pushing us at this point. Look at the heart. Look at, look at the heartbeat. He's so adorable. Look at him looting. Look at him looting right now. Look at this. Your teammate is getting absolutely strangled alive, and we're worrying about loot. What are you shooting at? Do you see a ghost, homie? Got a little paranormal activity going on, my guy. Oh. Yeah, we would put money on that. I'd be broke. Look, look, I'm not gonna, I don't know where to start. We're gonna hit three main points, actually. Let's, let's rewind to this. This was, look at this. So we're getting shot at. We have blood splatter in our eyeballs. We're also staring at an invisible ghost wall, which is pretty cool. Um, and we're heart beating, but not only are we heart beating now, we continue, wait for it, to heartbeat. With the tracers and the mini map not enough to tell you where the enemies are at so we talked about this the other day a lot of times when teams play with each other you know people want to they want they want teams to play with them more so they'll try to pretend like they're doing shit and look i get it he's level 24 I, he's a new player he's definitely a noob i get it uh-huh okay cool still gonna be very constructive 
with harsh criticism. What the hell is this? What are you shooting at? There's no one there. He wants to feel like he's a part of the fight, but the problem is he wasn't. Strangely enough, he did finish the last guy, but he wastes both of his lethals, sprays and prays, and then runs back here to not help his team. And then he loots. So like, meanwhile, green is literally in the middle of something crazy. 1v1, 1v2, 1v3, who knows? Blue is trying to help him and we're just, now I know he saw the sun grenade behind him, but he's got to realize it came from that team there. I don't mind a quick peek, but this whole, this whole shindig is a no-go. No-go. Because what happens, but for teammates go down. Now, of course, we know he goes off to loot. We know blah, da, da. He basically was a horrible teammate. Now, should this enemy team have been half as decent, this fight would have been completely different. And going back to shooting random things, um, I definitely wanted to touch on that. If you don't see an enemy, don't shoot your gun. I, I feel like a lot of the shit that I say, I, I shouldn't have to say. So I feel stupid when I do say it. But that's definitely one of the, one of the things. What are you shooting at, Johnny? What What is there? Come on, man. Tell me about the cough of a lung out of rage. Now this guy was pretty, he was pretty decent. He had a little bit of movement, but we're aiming high and the enemy literally just jumped into our crosshair, not once, but twice. Um, so he got himself killed on that. It's hard for me to say he's decent when he dies to this guy. Um, a lot of players always wonder why I go in on people who Fortnite jump all over the place. There's a time and a place to Fortnite jump for sure. Um, preferably side to side is what I like to do. B hopping side to side is always preferred. All right, but we just made a lot of noise. We brought a teammate back. So we needed to start looking around and get out of this freaking area. We're on the edge of the zone. Sometimes when you get shot at, guys, you gotta fight the enemy. You can't just turn around and run away. Well, that didn't take long. Well, the simple fact that we're on the edge of the zone. We're at a buy station. We just fought a team for like 30 minutes and we bought a squad mate back. There's four signs right there saying, red alert, there's a squad over here. So any aggressive team out here, of course, is gonna collapse in this area. Again, stop overstaying your welcome. I understand we'll get your teammate back. I get that. If you're gonna commit to the buy, Make a perimeter, have someone watch in directions. No one was watching, we were all just doing our own shit. Oh, Hunter. No shot to you survive this. I guess he does. All my sneak cups are dirty, so I'm drinking it out of a coffee cup. Don't judge me. All right, which is bad, because I literally have like 30 sneak cups. I've just been sick, drinking my sneak, because that's what I do, and I haven't done dishes. Don't judge me! There's really not much you can do from this point, I'm gonna be honest. We got 20 enemies left. The circle's relatively small. The loadout drops in the complete opposite direction. I really don't know how to regain from this. If I was Ace, I would have tried my best to rotate back to the loadout. He might do that with the vehicle. Maybe not. The loadout's gonna be a huge necessity. If you're gonna do anything, you're gonna want that fucking loadout. Preferably ghost class. I don't run ghosts normally. I hardly ever run ghosts, especially in this map. But um, when you're solo squad, you're gonna, you're gonna want that. You're gonna want that bad, especially when you're spending a lot of time looting money. Gotta buy in front of us to the 23. Now I talk about that. Ground loot weapons are okay. You can win with ground loot. You can. It's not preferred. It's good luck, but make your own decision. I just recommend going for loadout. Not to mention, the circle's going back that way anyway, so we're not going to be able to live down here for much longer. And the odds of finding a lot of money to get your squad mates back this late in the game in an area like this, basically zero. So what do you do? We made our decision not to take the load out. We've got teams over here on blue mark. The circle's closing in right now. We have a minute and a half before it does so. What do you do? Do you play the edge of the circle? and try to play as slow as possible, or do you go ahead and get positioned? Well, this, this is a tough circle to make that decision on, especially in this situation. If you move to the circle right now, you run the risk of getting pinched by a team that's already over there and the team that's coming in. It's a huge probability. However, you play the edge of the circle, 
you have a chance to pick off this squad and possibly win, which is better as far as fighting is concerned. The problem is you make noise, and when you're playing the edge, you run in with the edge, and guess what? You have a wide open field, so anybody that heard that noise is going to be gatekeeping you. Like I said, certain situations we put ourselves into, it's almost impossible to work ourselves out of. What I would do is get out of this vehicle and try to reposition and get out of this situation entirely. Um, it's a bad spot to be in. This is what we call uh, a no-win situation. Now, I say no-win situation. If you're if you're goaded on the sticks or mouse and keyboard, get it how you live. But for the average player, you're gonna die. Don't do it. There we go. Don't do it. Don't do it. Enemies right next to us. We literally heard. Oh my god, you're so crazy, my guy. There are footsteps right next to us. Hey, there we go. I don't know if I agree with this one. Your boy literally said, I don't want the pressure of the game on me. Come back, I'll die for it. Now look, it could have been bought. We could have bought him back without dying. We could have, you just got to drive vehicles normally. Drive the vehicle, stop the vehicle next to buy, buy quickly and get out. That was a very, it was very doable to get out safely. The problem that I had with it is the moment you buy back and you leave, you're going to get pelted from 19 different directions. So he would have died regardless. Moving on with five teams, 11 enemies left. All right, moving on. We have 14, 10 enemies left. All right, we got 12 kills. Again, we have three enemy teams left, and we're sitting here worrying about loot. We need to start looking around, analyzing the situation, because we need to rotate in 15 seconds. We've got two guys next to the berth, though. We can still rotate out of here safely. We don't have to contest them if we don't feel like it, but I think we do outnumber them, so I want to. Run, change your position, run. Now, I don't know what he's using. I'm sure it's powerful and shit, but it's, that's, no. It's not the, it's, no. I right hear he's like, I'm gonna, I don't know what he was thinking, but this is freaking dumb. You have two enemies for sure. If one's pushing, they're probably both pushing. Now, Green's trying his best to hold a different angle. I don't know why he's not shooting already. I would imagine this guy is visible to that direction, but he's not shooting. So he's no help at all. We commit to that and go down instantly. Now, our teammate does a good job coming in and finish off the stick. We could have changed this, this entire fight if we would have changed our position. Probably, right? The worst thing you can ever do in a gunfight is sit still in one spot when you're being pushed because what's the enemy going to do? They're going to push your shit in. Your best option is to rotate out of that area. Now, we could have rotated and ran into the guy that, that ended up killing us at the end. That's a probability, but it's still a better option than just sitting here waiting for the inevitable. Not to mention, this whole time we're sitting here looking around, we could have popped one plate, switch our weapon, by the way. Why the hell do we have this out? What in the musket bullshit is this? Again, committing to whatever. Moving on, but it's a 4v5 situation. We're in a really good spot. We have a good position. We technically have the high ground. Um, not too much cover, which could be a problem, but as long as we're good with our aim and our accuracy, we should be able to win this fight. And we have green pings going out in that direction, which would imply there is a squad over there. I like that we're moving to the left-hand side of the of the peak of the hill let me rewind this and explain this to you guys because i see this happen a lot so when you're looking at this hill right here a lot of players would just play this run down there and just watch both sides the problem with it is we know there's two teams left if one team happens to be on each side you'll get pelted from both directions 
if you leave this top little peak and you kind of work one of the corners one of the edges you can just basically utilize the ridge to protect your back from one of these squads and have a fair fight i don't see anybody over there i guess it was a false ping i'd still keep peeking in case they're in that little ravine but i don't know about that that's going off to the 243 trying to break back to cover now i don't like how we're all sticking together like this i understand there's not much cover what the fuck but well, we need to start spreading out again when you're in fights you want to attack the enemy from multiple directions that way when all the enemies are focused on you your teammates can pelt them in the side right so with that being said one of us needs to move to this little thing of rocks and ridges and outplay the situation remember we do outnumber everyone we should win this game basically on numbers we are guaranteed to win if they play like absolute idiots we will lose let's see what happens so it's closing in so at this point we need to start rotating and moving ourselves closer to the enemy great knock again strength in numbers we could take advantage of this i like that he's checking that, that left hand side i'm a little nervous about that too i gonna be honest Knock after knock, playing it safe. I gotta respect it. I'd probably go ahead and push in there, get a little bit more aggressive, but because we don't know where the second team is, I can respect it. One goes down, two goes down. We're able to get the wipe. It's a 2v3 situation. Green's bleeding out. We need to get back to him quickly. It's a 2v2 technically right now with both players up. And we could throw this, but we don't. Oh no. Oh no. GG! Now look, going back to the, the whole, you know, 2v3, 2v2 situation thing right here at the end. Again, you gotta use the strength and numbers to your advantage. I would've instantly went for the res on green. Hopefully got that up and forced the 3v3. Because it was a 2v2, we could've really threw that game. If those two enemies had been working together, they could have picked us off one by one and we we would have lost the game um you gotta try your best to be aware of everything around you don't get too overconfident don't get too complacent to where you let your teammate bleed out because you think you're gonna win i've seen teams i've been a part of teams that have blown games because of that mindset be better than that get better at this game make this game your little baby back bitch but guys again i hope you enjoyed the video hopefully i did a good job explaining with this sickness bullshit that i got um but hopefully I'll be coming back here full force hitting YouTube by storm to help give you guys tips and tricks on how to be better at this game. Until next time, guys, you have a good one and good luck in Warzone.